Of these eight dogs, six of them I have rescued. Whenever my family went to rescue a dog, the first place we would look was Pet Finder, which is a giant rescue organization. This is where I've gone most of my dogs from. And when I was growing up, my family, we would always go on Pet Finder and we'd always look up dogs. And me and my siblings, we would always show my parents several different dogs. And it got to the point where we actually had to put parental controls on Pet Finder so that we wouldn't go on it so much. <laughs> this still never stopped us. And even today, I'll send my parents links of dogs that need homes. When I was younger, I never really understood why we would why we would adopt dogs rather than breed. I, know, I knew there was a difference, but not really sure what it was. And as I've grown up and as I've adopted more dogs, I've learned to understand why it's more important to adopt dogs than to get one from a breeder. First of all, why should you get a dog? Well, dogs have been known as man's best friend, and even some websites have deemed them date magnets. <laughs> but besides that, dogs actually have medical benefits. Dogs have been proven to help people live a happier and healthier lifestyle. On top of that, dogs help lessen anxiety. Some colleges believe this works so well that they have rooms full of puppies just so people before and after exams can go and debrief. So when most people go and get a dog, the first place they look is a breeder because they can get the certain kind of breed of dog they want and they can get it quickly. However, most people should reconsider. Breed, getting a dog from a breeder can be expensive. First of all, the cost of the puppy itself. The cost of the puppy can be anywhere between $500 and $7,000, depending on the breed. On top of that, there's the cost of vet bills, there's the cost of food, and there's the cost to spay and neuter a dog which for those of you who don't know what spay or neutering is, it's where you take out the reproductive organs of a dog so that it can have a bunch of more puppies. And there's actually other health benefits to that too, which I'll address later. And when you get a puppy, they can be a bit destructive. When I got one of my dogs a puppy, she would chew on the rug and she would pee all over it because she wasn't house trained yet. And this is very common for most dogs. And eventually we had to throw that rug out. <laughs> And also, the, bre the breeding dogs, the ones who are being bred, don't necessarily have the happiest life. One of the dogs I've rescued was a long is a long-haired German Shepherd who was bred for her rare trait. Over seven years of her life, she gave out litters and litters of puppies, and finally they retired her. When we first brought her home, she was afraid of stairs. And so we had trouble getting her up the stairs. And that continued to her being afraid of flashes of cameras and even the, occasionally the other dogs. A few years later, she developed breast cancer, which is due to she wasn't neutered at a younger age. We had to get her surgery to remove all the tumors, and luckily she never got the cancer back. Besides being cheaper, there are other bonuses to shelter dogs. Primarily, you can get a mixed breed at a shelter. A mixed breed, because it has two different genetics to it, it doesn't have the issues of purebreds. So a genetic issue of, say, a German Shepherd won't necessarily come out in a mixed breed because it doesn't have two of the same genetics combining. On top of that, you can give a dog another life. Two of the dogs I've got came together, and we don't know much about their past home. But one of them, whenever we would go to pet him in the first few weeks, he would always flinch away, which led us to, be, to believe that he was probably hit in his last home. After a few months of living with my family, he learned to trust again, and so he no longer flinches whenever someone goes to pet his head. On top of that, you could be saving a dog's life. Out of the dogs I've adopted, five of them came from death row, which means they were going to be executed at some point in their life. And this isn't because the dogs are aggressive or there's something wrong with them. This is because shelters just don't have enough room. There's 7.9 million dogs without homes. And out of all these dogs, 35% are getting put down. And 
And people try to save these dogs before they do get put down, but occasionally some people pass over them due to how they look. One of the main things is because if they look aggressive. One of the most notorious is the pit bull. Another one that isn't as well known about is black dog syndrome. Black dog syndrome, defined by some websites, is a phenomenon where dogs with black fur are passed over in shelters for dogs with lighter color fur. This is because they don't stand out as much as the other dogs, so when they get pictures taken, they aren't as glamorous, and like, so on. Also, you can be saving a dog from a puppy mill. A puppy mill, puppy mills are essentially lower, are unhealthy breeding situations. So these are where the dogs live, essentially. They, there's like seven to eight dogs in tiny cages. The dogs aren't treated well, so they sit in their own feces. And if the dogs die, sometimes they stay in there. As you can see up there, there's a dog laying there with another dog. The dogs are mistreated that they can end up looking like the one in the corner over here. And these, and these dogs actually make up a big percentage of the ones in shelters, which unfortunately, a lot of them do get put down. So there are so many dogs out there without homes. And the fact that so many of them are getting put down is a shame. However, if people go to shelters before they go to breeders and take in dogs so that they aren't there anymore, less dogs can be put down every year. And this will be saving thousands of dogs' lives. So the next time, if you decide to go get a dog, maybe go check out your local shelter and you can still find the dog you like. Thank you.